Namaskar. Welcome to Kalakars Mehfil. It's a terrible situation, especially in India. And all of us worldwide, we have been going through this difficult time for almost more than a year now. Very recently, we have lost many maestros, good musicians due to COVID. So today's special session is a tribute to all those great maestros whom we have lost. And also it's going to be a session where we would like to support the COVID victims in India. My guest today is one of those people whom I consider not only a great musician, but a great person as well, who believes in giving something back to the community. She is considered as world's best female tabla player, a wonderful human being, you will meet with her soon and I don't want to really talk much about her because she has such a wonderful journey and I wanted all of you to listen to that, to witness not only her magical performance but her musical journey as well. Very prestigious award she has received, the President's Awardee as the first ladies award. She's a phenomenal musician, an outstanding performing artist who has performed worldwide with world famous maestros. So you would listen to all her stories today. So please let us welcome Pandita Anuradha Pal joining us today all the way from Mumbai. Namaskar. Namaskar. Thank you so much for that warm welcome and uh, welcome to everyone across the world who is watching this wonderful program. Thank you for joining us, Anuradha. It's such a pleasure to have you. I know we have lost so many maestros, so it's not a really happy, happy occasion at the moment. But you know, mm -hmm. I have received so many messages that you have agreed to come and perform for us here today, which will give a lovely, lovely peace. We will send this peace to our music. This is actually a tribute to those maestros uh, because, you know, honestly, I didn't uh, have the heart to come because we've lost so many great masters. And, uh, you know, I have played with all these masters that we have lost mm -hmm. and as close friends, colleagues, seniors, masters, everybody across the spectrum uh, that we have lost. Uh, where I think, uh, so I've been personally impacted but uh, I just felt this was a good opportunity to pay tribute and our humble pronouns to the great music and the contribution that they made through yeah. their life. And for us to, uh, in our own humble way, uh, reach out to those COVID victims in India who are suffering so much. And uh, it's something that I, so I, along with some friends, uh, you know, the the local MLA and the municipal councillor are close friends of mine, uh, Renu, Ansaraj, and uh, Amit Satamji. And uh, we are all trying to set up a 25 uh, bed hospital, a COVID care center, I would say, because the hospitals are all totally over full. And so we are trying to set it up in a school uh, in uh, Juhu in Mumbai. And uh, this is a fundraiser for them, uh, for a, a little effort in that direction. Mm. You know, as you, as you can imagine, setting up even a 25 bed hospital is a huge cost, not only of, uh, you know, the equipment and all that, but getting doctors and getting the whole thing started is a huge, huge task. And we have a whole team of people and I'm just one a little contributing member in that. So this is a uh, this is a humble effort uh, to pay tribute to those masters by uh, and I would say that those who can contribute to this uh, you know every, uh, 
you know, it would be great if Chandraji could publish that link and uh, uh, of the Ritambara Center, and uh, we could you could send in your donations, or if you could write to me directly if your foreign uh, remittances, uh, uh, because this is only for Indian remittances. So if you are, you know, for those who want to send funds from abroad, we can find a different way to uh, get it into an FCRA compliant uh, NGO. Uh, so, but if people can write to us, uh, that would be great. And then we can uh, guide them further about the donation. Any support that we can do, please come forward and support this great cause that Anuradha is doing. You can either contact Anuradha, you can contact the details that I have also published on Facebook. You can contact Kalakar Arts as well as me, and we will do it together. If we don't stand yeah. together, we won't be able to do it. We all need to come together. So um, okay. let me welcome Dr. Kamalbir Singh, a great person, supporter, a friend, and um, a great musician. Dr. Kamalveer Singh from here, and Dr. Siddharth Kargupta is also joining us from Mumbai. Namaskar. Namaskar, Namaskar. Kamalveer. Namaskar, Shiva. It's so Namaskar. nice to see Anuradha ji here today, um, as she was Namaskar. mentioning that in, in such a hard time when we are all suffering, uh, the whole world is suffering, and uh, music is one of the source, all the musicians, we are so grateful to the musicians who keep doing their work, um, regardless of the um, money. Mm -hmm. Many musicians are doing it free from their heart because they just want people, this world to be entertained and still have their morale high uh, in such a depressing time. So Anuradha ji, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you so much. Uh, this is just such a wonderful opportunity to meet with wonderful friends like you, people who have been supporters and, you know, uh, in my life's journey. And so nice to connect with all of you through Chandaji. Thanks. So how how do you start today? Anuradha, it's over to you. Whichever way we want to start your <laughs> performance. I'm sure well, the whole world is waiting to hear those <laughs> magical sounds that we have already experienced during the sound check. So maybe right. it would be a great start and great tribute with if we could start with some music. So, um, <clears throat> What would you like to hear? I have my uh, <laughs> iPad. Your uh, tabla, whichever tal you prefer. Anything that you prefer. Just to let our viewers know, Anuradha is the disciple of the great maestro Ustad Allah Rakha Khan Sab mm -hmm. and Ustad Zaki Hussain. Mm -hmm. And I was reading some uh, newspaper reviews where it says that she is considered as the female version of Ustad Zaki Hussain. And I could see the way she was when we were doing the sound check. She was so happy with Tabla. Like, it's not like it's my thing. It's my kind of thing. So mm -hmm. that's the kind of energy I could feel during the sound check. And I really wanted all of the viewers to witness that. So let's let's hear it, Anuradha. Thank you once again. Okay. Thank you so much. Beshkar, uh, which is a uh, this is in Rag Charu Keshi. Thank you. 
just to give this is a i played a little longer but that's okay <laughs> thank you thank you so much um anuradha that's that's right actually created a magic as soon as you started and i have a lot of comments here i just would like to read a few of them right. um sri sharma is saying such a worthwhile event meena rakshit my dream is coming true now Shilpi Ravi, lovely gift from Kalakar on the beautiful day of Guru Dev Rabindranath Tagore's 160th birthday. Shilpi Didi, and to all our viewers, there is a more coming where we are actually directly linked today with Guru Dev Rabindranath Tagore. You would hear it from Anuradha, so I'm not going to say anything about that. But there are some more comments here. Uh, we have Lisa Famida, Muhammad. Shahidul Zaman, we have Munju Ranjan Chakraborty that my parents and also a happy Mother's Day to all the mothers out there and my namaskar to all the mothers. Navanita Choudhury, Devashish Adhikari, Aman Khinot, Shayoni, Ruparela Soni, Sudhir Vani, Kanchan Bharadaj, Bobby Dalvin Nanda. A lot of people are watching us today and I am receiving messages from all over the world for organizing this concert. It's a tribute concert today, as well as a fundraising. So now let us hear from Anuradha directly about her wonderful, exciting journey. But before we do that, Anuradha, please tell our viewers, 
the link that we have been talking about just before we started with Gurudev Rabindranath Tagore, because it was Ravindra Jayanti yesterday and everyone has celebrated that. So please hmm. tell us all about it. Okay, so, uh, well, it's rather interesting that my grandfather uh, was the great M.T. Vyas and uh, he was, uh, <clears throat> that's him, and he created 40 schools all over India. And uh, he was a Padma Shri for education. He, uh, you know, he was, he studied in Oxford and then he came back to India and uh, he also studied under Gurudev Rabindranath Tagore. And uh, once he came back, uh, when he studied from uh, under Tagore Saab, uh, that's when he took the Ashram school, the, uh, the Shantani Ketan uh, model. And he took that model uh, with Gurudev's blessings and uh, came to came back to Gujarat and uh, set up the first village school in his own village. And uh, that's when he set up this, uh, you know, this was a little school under a people tree. And from there he started, he, he founded 40 schools all over India. And uh, the flagship school being the new era school in uh, Mumbai, which is actually accredited as uh, the five best schools of Asia by UNESCO. And uh, now the interesting thing was that when he went to Shantiniketan, not only did he get uh, the model of Shantiniketan back in to found those schools, but he also brought the Rabindra Shangit, uh, which was in, uh, you know, which was so much, uh, you know, he brought that into uh, into the nursery rhymes. So he said he, his thought process was that why should a child not be exposed to classical music from the time he's born? So instead of teaching a child Jack and Jill went up the hill to fetch a pail of water, make it meaningful, make him learn and enjoy the learning without realizing it. So that's when he created these, uh, he, he got a teacher to learn these uh, uh, the Rabindra Shangit, uh, the teacher was Pinaki Trivedi. And uh, he went to and studied under Gurudev, got those, uh, uh, you know, those nursery rhymes written in Gujarati, but in the original tune used in Rabindra Shangit. And that's when he got it and he taught the children uh, these. So that is why the New Era School actually has a very, very rich tradition of classical music, of Indian culture, of everything that can be considered uh, Indian in every way, you know. And, uh, uh, it, and in, in fact, he was so much ahead of his time that he created the new education policy uh, that was released last year by uh, the government of India. Uh, actually, uh, my grandfather, uh, created this document, uh, which was released uh, just last year. It was edited by my mother, Ila Pal, uh, who was a well-known painter and a writer. Incidentally, that's her painting. And this is her edited work. And this is, of course, written by my grandfather, M.T. Vyas. So this is, um, yeah, I'll just put that ahead for you. So you can enjoy the painting and enjoy the this uh, beautiful book. And uh, this book is actually, uh, was released by the Union Minister of Education, uh, Sri uh, Ramesh Bokriya Nishangji, and uh, uh, last year, and it was released in a, in a, in a very august uh, audience of uh, vice chancellors of various universities from across India, as well as very, very, uh, learned people like uh, Rajeshwar Acharya ji, who is the president of the Sangeet Natak Academy in uh, UP, and so many others who actually are very much on the forefront of education, uh, be it uh, people, you know, like Swati uh, uh, and Ashok Pandey ji, who are actually, were even uh, sort of contributory to the new education policy in their own way. So I think uh, this, uh, so, you know, the whole concept of Sri Shakti, or the whole concept of women empowerment and uh, education and uh, 
uh, the whole broad outlook to life and also the whole thing about giving back to society in fact i might just tell you that whatever i am doing is not even 1% of what my grandfather did because he did uh, he gave 200 bigas of land now biga is literally i think uh, uh, it's literally i think five uh, make one acre uh, i think that's how how it works so you can imagine how much of land he just gave away to the poor and his, his when he made the school also he made it only on uh, donations that were given back with interest to the person who gave it so he 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 slept on the foot on the footpath uh, he didn't have money but he had a dream and uh, so he slept on the footpath ek time ka khana khate the chana aur gud aur pani and ek time ka khana unko milta tha so this was his uh, life and that's how he went to newera school and so many other schools and contributed to uh education so this is a very close link that i have with gurudev uh, tagore uh, ravindranath tagore uh, that i could uh, in a certain sense get that blessing through my grandfather and through the teachings of my grandfather uh, and i'm very uh, happy and honored that today is uh, gurudev's birthday yesterday was my birthday day before yesterday was maharaja pratap's birthday and uh, of course also yesterday was the birthday of uh, uh, you know appa ji uh, girja devi ji and uh, pandit uh, gyan prakash ghosh ji and uh, so i'm um, you know and today is gurudev's birthday so it couldn't have been a better occasion to meet and uh, also pay tribute to all these masters that we unfortunately lost in the last one year especially in this covid time Thank you so much, Anuradha. Um, Shupriyo, thank you for joining. Shupriyo, Shupriyo is saying warm regards to Kalakaraj and Chandra Devi for this initiative. These kinds of positive vibes are so important in these trying times. True. Nice to see Kamal Vijay, Shridhar Soda, and obviously to this guest of honor, Anuradha Devi as well. Great to know about her rich legacy. There's more, Shupriyo. Stay tuned. Um, Lalit Shishadia, wonderful. Tabla Maestro Anuradha Pal Didi Pranam. Then we have Ranvendra Pratap Singh. Very beautiful presentation. Thank you so much. Shidhartho, anything from you before we move into music again? Because I, I really can't. I would love to listen to more and more and more. Shabas Bhai, thank you so much for joining. Shabas Bhai, um, Anuradha, you may know Shabas Bhai. He's the great. Yes. Tabla Maestro. Wonderful he is over here. Yes. Wonderful person. Kiran Pal Singh Ji, Namaskar for joining. Warm regards and best wishes. Shidharth, anything from you? Uh, yeah, firstly, um, thank you, uh, Anuradha, for uh, joining this session. It's absolutely fantastic to have you. Um, thank you so much. And it was fascinating to, fascinating to hear about your legacy and especially your grandfather, um, what he did. and. Uh, and and the circumstances that he was in, uh, amidst which he did that, and it's, it's absolutely uh, mind-boggling actually. So thank you for sharing that that story with us. Um, before you get onto your music, I always, you know, uh, there's one question that uh, always fascinates me. I just want to understand, you know, how uh, the musicians, the different musicians. How they view music. So, what is music to them? You know, that is a very fundamental, very uh, root level question I always have in mind. So, what is actually music? Is it something that we just do or perform or learn? Or what? So, I would like to have your view uh, on how. What is music to you? Honestly, music to me is uh, oxygen. tabla to me is my my pulse my lifeline and music playing music practicing tabla listening to music is uh, it's not just important i would say it's the reason why i live and uh, it's it's something which i 
I think I there has not been a single day in my life when I haven't practiced tabla, uh, and I've done that despite uh, having a very busy schedule, be it of studies, because I came from a highly educated family, highly cultured family, where uh, unfortunately, since I didn't come from a musician family, it was expected that I would be very very good in my studies, and because my parents were super achievers. Uh, and uh, accomplished, and their life story is so inspiring. I I just can't even begin to share that with you. And uh, in fact, even in my grandfather on my father's side uh, has a very inspiring story. And from that side, so uh, it's uh, I think for me, music is is a worship. It's it's not it's the it's the reason why I live. It's the way. Uh, I used to connect with my soul, and it's my—it's the biggest joy I—I feel. I feel. I mean, I have gone through tremendous tragedies in my life, tremendous ups and downs in my life, uh, tremendous uh, negative situations, but it's only music that has pulled me out and uh, has helped me to retain my positivity and everything and that optimism and uh, in fact last year when uh, the moment uh, you know india was put into lockdown and uh, it was announced i uh, i took it on myself to uh, to beat the blues literally uh, through um, a program that i presented every day uh, live on facebook and instagram uh, which was called uh, Beat the Blues with Anuradha Pal. And the whole idea of the program was to spread positivity. To first nine days, I just taught tabla to everyone. And there were people calling in from Argentina, Brazil, Japan, Australia, US, UK, and logging in and in the evening and learning live. And um, then uh, as the lockdown was extended and extended, for 64 days, I came up with more and more new topics, both about the beauty of our classical music, also paying a lot of tribute to the masters because uh, April, May is a time when a lot of musicians have been born in that time. Uh, you know, if you see Pandit Ravi Shankarji, Ustadari Burkhasa, uh, and so many masters have been born. So I paid tribute to all those masters uh, last year in that program, as well as spread information about what it was in their music that they saw, uh, the question that you ask. So that people who uh, listen to us have an appreciation uh, for the kind of hard work that we put in. Very often, like I'm asked this question, uh, you know, you playing for so many years, do you still need to practice? And of course I need to practice. And of course I need to not only practice, but practice very hard every day and think about my music every day and understand where do I want to go, where, I'm, where am I at and where do I need to go. So unless I think about my music and attach myself completely and surrender myself completely to my music, I will not grow. And that is the kind of, I should say, the... Uh, I, I, it's beyond worship. It's beyond worship. I, I can't express it in words, but it is my life. Uh, and, uh, uh, you know, in fact, even I remember when, uh, when my, uh, you know, I went through a tremendous amount of personal tragedy when my uh, father went into hospital because of brain cancer and then he was suffering for several months and then, uh, he he passed away and three days later there was a concert of Sri Shakti that was already planned uh, several months before that and uh, several people were telling me to cancel the concert and uh, say that how would it be if you did the concert it would not look good etc and I remember my mother standing up for me and saying that uh, uh, you would pay the biggest tribute by playing for your father because your father was such a committed professional. He made you a committed professional. He expected you to perform no matter what. And that's exactly what really happened. I have performed in 104 degrees fever. I performed in a riot. I performed in a curfew in a, any kind of situation. I performed with 
by chartering a plane and and reaching a, a destination because a commitment had to be fulfilled so that is the inculcation and that is the passion and the commitment i attach to my music just to give you uh, uh, an idea of a little uh, just to give you a little example and uh, so even when uh, so you know this concert was 3 days later and my mother said no you will perform and you will pay tribute to your father and you will you will do your best because that's what a professional means and uh, and literally i mean she came to the concert imagine she you know my parents were crazily about crazy about each other uh, and uh, she came to the concert and she supported me right in the front and then when i finished she hugged me and she said your father would be so proud i uh, you stood up to his to the test and i know what and she knew how much i i i love and you know i love my parents tremendously and i and i uh, was very shaken but i had a commitment to live up to and that's what i have gone through in my life whether it was you know even when my mother passed away i had to go through uh, a concert and i had to do it because i had to pay tribute so sometimes people can misunderstand that are you doing that for the money but if i was doing that for money i wouldn't be contributing uh, to several causes and i wouldn't be doing this fundraiser for those several causes so for me music is a passion is life thank you so much thanks a lot for your answer wonderful wonderful to hear you know since the day we started this online journey anuradha i have been blessed by the presence of old world famous maestros and whom i always say that you know we see them on stage we see them performing and we think it's a great performance but we don't know the story behind it all this struggle we have to go through all this journey that makes a musician a maestro you need to really learn those to hear those you know Absolutely. so you know so many times people tell me uh, that oh you are very lucky that you got to play with xyz masters etc mm-hmm. and yesterday you know when i was speaking to uh, sukanya ravi shankar ji uh, you know chinnamma uh, and she very sweetly wished me on my birthday and i spoke with her after that and when i told her about this and she said you know what uh, you those who deserve to get blessed only get blessed those who get who does who work really hard get that blessing and because i was telling her about uh, you know i mean you probably know that when i was um, you know uh, i had a great opportunity to also accompany uh, padit ravi shankar ji mm-hmm. and have a lot of uh, close training opportunity from him and the reason for that was when i was you know from uh, learning from abaji every year on guru purnima uh i was always supposed to play and abaji would tell me that uh, okay last year you played 11 beats this year you play 13 beats then <laughs> so he was always raising the bar for me mm-hmm. and not only that he would tell me uh is bar uh, pandit shiv kumar sharma ji aane wale program mein तो उस तरह से उनको ये ताल पसंद है तो वो ताल बजाना तुम यू नो सो ही लाइक्स दिस ताल यू प्ले दैट ताल और इफ पंडित रविशंकर जी वॉज कमिंग ही वुड टेल मी सर ये पंडित जी आने वाले हैं तो फॉर ही लाइक्स पंचम सवारी वेरी मच सो प्ले पंचम सवारी नाउ जस्ट टू बी गिवन दैट टास्क एंड दैट वॉज बेली टू वीक्स और मे बी वन वीक नोटिस आई वुड बी गिवन दैट ओके सच अ ग्रेट मास्टर इज कमिंग टू to listen in the guru purnima so i think that uh, you know i had to push myself to ramp up to perform in front of these masters so when i played uh, with ustad amjad ali khasa so of course i had also already played with played for pandit ravi shankar ji and pandit shiv kumar sharma ji and sitara devi ji and all these great masters because they had come to the guru purnimas and uh, and otherwise also i was performing with dance and all that so they would hear me and plus shiv ji would call me to play with him hari ji would call me to play with them so that blessing i got and then there was an amazing thing uh, blessing i would say uh, that i was playing with um, ustad amjad ali khan sahab in uh, mumbai in a festival and 
Pandit Ravi Shankar Ji was going to perform right after him. And uh, uh, after I finished the performance with uh, Ustad Ji, that's when uh, Pandit Ravi Shankar Ji came, Guru Ji came to me and he said, give me your number uh, and I'll talk to you afterwards. So the next day, uh, you know, I mean, of course, he finished his performance, which is phenomenal. And then I think about four days later, I got a phone call from Pandit Ravi Shankar Ji saying that it's my birthday and I want you to come and perform on my birthday in Delhi. And, uh, and uh, so the next morning I took a flight, straight landed in Delhi uh, and I reached his house and he was already practicing with his students. There was, uh, you know, Pandit Deepak Chaudhary Ji, Pandit Vishwamon Ji, uh, Bhaji, and so many of his other students around. And then he said, you know, you have to play with uh, Vishwamon Bhaji and Deepak Chaudhary Ji. So in the evening I played with them and Pandit Ji sat opposite. Uh, and I mean, he sat in the audience and the way he shook him, his uh, body, you know, he was a dancer, uh, yeah. Guruji, and uh, to me, he shook his body and, and then afterwards, he, um, when I went and touched his feet and took his blessings, and then he hugged me and he said, you gave me the best gift possible on my birthday. Now that, and then he made me stay back and he said, you stay and play with me, practice with me. And, uh, that opportunity of learning and practicing with such masters. So mm -hmm. I think, yes, you know, you know, fortune favors the brave, but you really have to work hard to get there. You really have to push yourself to be able to stand up to the challenge of these masters, because these are not masters for nothing. They didn't make it for nothing. They got there because they worked damn hard and they mm -hmm. have an extraordinary talent to get there. And that is what, I do my naman to everybody, every day, and be inspired by it. Lovely. Thank you, Anuradha. Shonali Mukherjee, one of our esteemed um, audience and a friend as well, she's saying such wonderful experience of listening to you, having goosebumps, isn't it, Shonali? Yes, I definitely agree with you. Uh, we have Kiran Palji saying, we played together in concerts, proud of all the wonderful achievements Anuradha has and invaluable contribution to Tabla. Bobby so Dabhinandra is saying, must have been so difficult to perform in such circumstances. But again, Bobby G, as Anuradha said, it's a commitment. It's a professionalism that you know, we have to maintain. And that's what shows how you become a maestro. You, know, you have to maintain this professionalism. You have committed to perform, you would have to no matter what. So, you um, know, very often people uh, misunderstand the word professionalism. And uh, I want to say this. People think professionalism is about commercialism. Uh, people think professionalism is about charging money. Actually, uh, professionalism is about that compelling need to live up to your commitment. That is professionalism. When you are a prof and and honestly, I get this from my parents. I'll tell you the training I received from them, the kind of very tough training I received from my, my parents, the disciplinarians that they both were, the way that they were very uncompromising about their expectation from me. Whether it's studies, I have to be in the top three. Uh, if it's tabla, then I have to be getting there. Uh, whether it's singing, then I have to do that. So I mean, whether it's sports, then I have to do. So it's like, Every, you can do what you like, but you have to be the best at it. So I think, and you have to be professional about it, no matter what your problem. Like I said, whether it's 104 degrees fever, I have uh, once, I, I'll just narrate this, you know, when you're talking about different experiences, and these are some experiences that not many people know about, and I'm uh, just uh, sharing some of these very special uh, gems of stories that I think a lot of people don't know. You know, I was uh, playing with, uh, you, you know, Kiran Palji. I, I, I also want to uh, acknowledge him because he played uh, in my mother's, uh, you know, Barsi. Uh, we did a performance and Kiran Palji was very gracious to perform at the Barsi program uh, that we had organized. So thank you, Kiran Palji, for not only being there that time, but being there today. Thank you for this. Uh, so coming back to uh, that incident, 
I was uh, playing with uh, Pandit Satish Vyaji in uh, uh, Udipi, Mysore, and uh, I was touring with him. And uh, there was this open air concert, and suddenly it, after the concert got over, it suddenly rained. You know how these days the weather changes are. And suddenly it rained. And uh, so uh, I, I, you know, I, I got wet and then we were going to somebody's place for dinner. So there was no place to change my clothes and all that. So I caught a fever. And uh, of course, because of the travel and change of food and travel and weather and all that, uh, I had uh, maybe, uh, so I got this fever. The next morning, if, so that, that day, night it was about 101 degrees fever, which is okay. The next day I reached Bombay and um, the same night I was going to play with Pandit Hari Prasad Chaurasiaji in Hong Kong. And uh, so uh, I went to the doctor <laughs> and just to check that, you know, whether I had a viral fever or what was it. So he said, yeah, you have a viral fever, you should not go anywhere. I said, sir, I have a performance and I have to play. So give me whatever you want to give me and I'm going. So uh, I I went there and then when I reached Hong Kong, uh, I played with um, him and Minakshi Shishadriji. So there were two concert, three concerts uh, I played there. Came back to Bombay and uh, the next morning, I was uh, to go to a place called Kurduwadi. Now Kurduwadi is a little, um, it's a little station which is in the interior Maharashtra. Okay, interior. And it's a little bit of a, it's a, like a Kheda gaon, you know, uh, a district. Um, I don't know how do you describe it. It's a little gaon, a li little village. And uh, so I was, uh, I was, uh, to reach there, there was no flight, there was no nothing else possible except a train. And it was so it was an eight or nine hour train journey. And finally reached there at uh, in the Skurduwadi. And um, uh, the organizers came to receive me. And there's this dark, desolate station that I reach. And uh, there's not much light. And then finally, some people come and receive me and say, yeah, 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 please come and welcome and all that. And uh, and I say, okay, where is the car? And they say, no, there's no car, you know, because this is the village. So we've come to take you in this bullock cart. <laughs> so, uh, I, uh, so I, uh, fine, I said, okay, that's what it is. There it is. So I got into the bullock cart. And of course, there was a lot of cold breeze because this was December time and cold breeze coming in and uh, played uh, and there was a about half an hour one hour journey in that uh, place and then we, we reached the guest house and i had a bath and had my dinner and everything and uh, the doctor came there uh, because i was feeling very feverish uh, and he said you have 104 degrees fever and uh, he said please rest uh, give you this medicine and you please rest and I had a tabla solo performance the next morning. So it was about 11 o'clock at night. And uh, he said, uh, you know, you can rest for a while, but four o'clock is your performance. So rest for a bit. And then uh, in the morning, anyway, you have to take a train back. So I was just going to go and rest when some musician friends came there. And they said, well, hey, you know, you're there. Why didn't you play with us? And I said, well, I, uh, but you must be having some other tabla players fixed with you. He said, yeah, but you know, we don't want to play with them. So if you could play with us, it'll be very nice. So, um, you know, uh, I said, but I mean, it's not really fair that you booked them and you're asking me to play. He said, yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know, please, you know, they, they will not mind. We'll talk to them, but you play with us. It'll be fun with you. So uh, I played with them and uh, then I played my tabla solo and uh, the next morning caught a train and came back to Bombay. So all this in 104 degrees fever for wow. a week. So, uh, and that's only because of the commitment. And that's what I mean by um, when you want to do so, when there's a will, there's a way. You just do it. Yeah. Thank you. Things have not been so easy for me. Things weren't have not been easy uh, in many fronts. This I'm only talking of the happy stories, uh, which may be there, but there have been many which have been about uh, uh, because we are surrounded by so much of negativity that I'm only talking of the positive things at life, <laughs> consciously. Thank you.
Thank you, Anuradha. So Actually, many comments. I'm going, to, was... I'm going to read. Sorry, Shidhartho. Kamal Biji, I know you and Shidhartho, you both have a lot of questions to ask. So do I. But I think the audience is eagerly waiting to hear a little mm -hmm. bit of more tabla from Anuradha. Anuradha, over Anuradha. to you, whatever you want to present. OK. So what uh, do you have any questions now or uh, do we Wait, do I think is, is, it would be good to hear some tabla first and then I could read the questions because I can see the questions here on comments as well okay so if we could just hear a bit of tabla I think it would be just mind-blowing okay thank sure. you okay so what I'll play now is uh, a tabla jugal bandi okay this is something yeah. which I created I, I created uh, you know I felt that the tabla needs to be, um, it's, it's such an incredible instrument that despite that, people look at it as, as only an accompanying instrument at times, uh, despite it having established itself as a solo instrument with so many masters uh, performing incredibly. So I said, okay, how can I make a little contribution? So I said, let me try and do a, a tabla jugal bandi with myself uh, where the you know the so i'm pre i present over here the masculine and the feminine the ardha narishur wow. and uh, of course i normally present this with uh, two rags uh, played live uh, I also did something little different and I said rather than having a sarangi or a harmonium, try and play the keyboard with a different kind of a sound. So it's a more, it's a sort of a combination of the traditional and the contemporary. And that in a certain sense, the idea is more to expand our audiences because Indian classical music is the most incredible music in the world. And we need to have more younger audiences join in and enjoy this. And which is why I felt that we I needed to make a more <coughs> contemporary connect as well. Right. So this is uh, uh, I'm I'll start with a Pakhavaj Ang uh, tabla, right? And uh, so this is a Pakhavaj Ang tabla, and this is the female, and that's the male. Okay. And uh, but before that. You know, very uh, recently, it was Pandit Kishan Maharaji's uh, death anniversary, his 12th death anniversary. And I would like to also pay tribute to him with uh, a Ganesh Vandana that he used to most incredibly perform. I'm not going to play that because what he did is amazing. But I'm only going to say it because he said it, he gave this to me as a prashad. Uh, I remember he called me there to perform in Banaras when I was 17 or 18 years old. And uh, and this was a performance where um, uh, all the greats were performing uh, from Ustad Amjad Ali Khasa to Pandit Kishan, uh, to, of course, Pandit Kishan Maharaji to Pandit Shivkumar Sharmaji to Amjad Ali Khasa to just about everybody, Pandit Rajan and Sajan Mishraji, all of them were performing there. And I was the only nobody there, uh, given this huge opportunity by Maharaji. And so this is a tribute to him, a Ganesh Vandana, uh, which very beautifully describes Lord Ganesh and um, in the shlok. <clears throat> so I'll just say this for you. This is a tribute to Maharaji. Gananam Ganapati Ganesh Lambodar Sohe Bhujachar Ik Dant Chandrama, Lalata Raje, Brahma, Vishnu, Mahesh, Talale, Drupada Gave, To Ati Vitichit, Vitichit, I'm sorry. To Ati Vichitra Gananath Aj, Ridanga Bajavi, Dada the Rata, Dada the Rakradana, Dinna, 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 Nagin, 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 Dana, Dana, Dinna, Dinna Takinada, Tadigin, Drigger, Drigger, Dagradan, Kritik Dadana, Taran, Dagrik Dadan, Taran, Dagrik Dadan, Taran, Dagrik Dadan, Taran, Taran, this is the Ganesh Vandana, and I'll start with the Ardha Nareshwana. I'm uh, playing this on a uh, uh, Sarangi Lehra in, in Raj Charukishi. Thank you. 
Let's say a male and a female are going shopping and the male wants to buy something and the female wants to buy something and uh, they have a little bit of a tip and finally the male has to convince the female say come along okay I'm sorry we'll go and buy what you want to buy it happens right they're going together This is my own contemporary interpretation. This is, of course, traditional compositions. The male and the female both are going out shopping. Thank you. 
finally pulls the man to agree and they buy what the the lady wants to buy <laughs> the, the last word is always the lady's word remember that <laughs> absolutely ghar ghar ki kahani this is thank you this whole in, in these i just thought a little humor might be nice in these difficult times it's we need music and humor to pull us through thank you uh, to our viewers once again this is a fundraising that anuradha and we are trying to support the covid victims in india on kalakar's facebook page you will see the bank details so please do come forward help and support now there are quite a lot of comments and questions but um, shall i just read them through kamal vijay or would you like to say something to anuradha first you can read the questions first then i'll ask some questions if those All questions right. are not included in my questions <laughs> sure sure um, shilpi ravi is saying um, okay before i start the questions to my viewers as always thank you so much for being there and your support your love your encouragement uh, please do share these are wonderful sessions as you can see you can see anuradha performing on stage worldwide but to hear her journey all the stories the struggles so i think we should all share this to our friends families and whoever out there has missed today's session please do share shilpi ravi is asking it's been over a year that people are locked so also the performers anuradha ji how do you motivate during this tough time each day as we know performers preferred place is stage and they prefer applause of public please answer uh okay well i would say that uh, i motivate myself by riyas lots of riyas uh there was you know i took on the mantle like i said right in the beginning i decided to do the beat the blues uh series which is 64 series program of where i taught 108 uh, sorry 1800 hours of 1800 minutes of music uh which was taught free uh secondly i also did um a fundraiser for the marginalized folk classical and tribal musicians of india uh and the instrument makers because i literally i was getting so many panic calls from musicians when you know everybody stuck at home no money no events no tourism no nothing happening and uh i said well i can't provide uh, so so anyway so i went on to uh raise funds uh, first through a four day 
uh, online music festival which I organized, where uh, 27 leading uh, musicians of India supported me and they performed on my platform. And uh, right from, uh, you know, great artists like uh, Bhajan Samrat, Anup Jaluta Ji, Pandit Satish Vyas Ji, uh, so, so many artists, I mean, just uh, so many artists who performed from Carnatic music, from North Indian music, uh, Ustad Iqbal Ahmad Khan Sahib, uh, the, you know, Rajan Sajan Ji, so many masters performed in that. And uh, so I was, um, I was very uh, motivated uh, with that support. And I decided, and I, and I went out with, and to my friends and got a lot of support uh, in terms of donations and also through, uh, the help uh, was able to reach out to uh, and extend financial support to uh, uh, about uh, 300 musicians all across India. And uh, we extended financial support right from, you know, depending on the situation that the musician was going through, uh, if, if somebody had had an accident or somebody was suffering from COVID uh, or somebody was, uh, just uh, a bar singer uh, and a, a chorus singer or an orchestra singer. I even gave, we even gave a ration, you know, food ration, uh, good food ration for two, three months to each musician. So I think uh, these were some of the steps I personally took through my organization and through this uh, campaign, which I called uh, Kalaki Sang. And which is uh, very nice that Kalaki Kalakar is uh, talking about this, and where we are, uh, because I've always believed that as musicians we need to have unity. I think our music is most incredibly advanced spiritually, musically, technically incredible music in the world, but it hasn't gotten its due for some reason or the other, maybe we haven't marketed it as well, maybe a combination of factors. And uh, and I felt that as musicians, we need to come together to support each other. So which is why when, uh, you know, when I launched this campaign and 300 musicians were helped, and even then I went ahead and uh, in January, I launched Atma Nirbhar Kalaki Sang Festival, where, uh, Atmanirbhar, as you know, uh, the Prime Minister Modi ji had launched the Atmanirbhar Bharat uh, Abhiyan, where he wanted uh, each person to empower himself to become self-reliant uh, in these difficult times. And uh, taking that one step uh, forward into a musical arena uh, context, I decided to uh, launch a festival where uh, every day, one marginalized musician, and it could be a folk musician or a tribal musician or a classical musician, was presented on my Facebook page, uh, where I have a decent uh, good number of followers. And uh, so that that artist not only gets a good platform, then of course he receives a payment for that performance. And uh, in addition, we put his mobile wallet uh, so what we did was we put the mobile wallet of every one of those musicians who was performing. So let's say if an ex-musician was performing today, his mobile wallet was there. So anybody across the world could contribute to that person and it would reach that person directly. So that was my way to empower the musician community to monetize their work, to reach a larger audience and for their and we also published their phone numbers so each group that performed even if a person was from Uttarakhand or from Gujarat or from Odisha or Assam Tamil Nadu Telugu, uh, uh, Bengal uh, Karnataka everywhere so we had uh, we have been able to help artists from across 15 or 16 states all across India and uh, a cross section of artists. And uh, this was a very important endeavor because uh, the artists could not only get paid for their performance, were not only getting listened and viewed, and viewed by so many thousands of people across my platform. Plus, 
also uh, their mobile wallets being published and their phone numbers being published they were contacted directly by organizers we were not intermediaries because i always and that was my little contribution in empowering these marginalized musicians and so i motivated myself by helping others to come back to the question uh, how did i motivate myself one through a lot of riyas through a lot of introspection through a lot of listening to masters uh, and a lot of uh, uh reflecting on what i have done and where i need to go and more importantly to help others because i felt that everyone keeps complaining there no concerts there no concerts but this is probably a great time to go within and find yourself to find yourself and grow yourself as a human being and a musician not just as a musician so uh i took this time to uh to to go within to grow and work on my music and also to work on helping others and i think that uh, gave me a lot of motivation in my own work and i and i strongly believe that you know in this journey of course i must acknowledge my husband shyam sharma has a, hu a huge role to play because he not only has uh, supported and empowered me and 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 completely identified with my causes and supported me in all my craziness so uh so uh really i always believe that you know when they say that behind a, a successful man there's a woman i believe behind a successful woman there's a man and here uh, i'd like to thank all the men in my life beat the male musicians and all the senior masters who i've worked with uh who have been and of course my gurus and all the great people mf hussain saab was another master who inspired me tremendously so uh, i have been fortunate to and i always believe that you know you have to sponge you don't get it you have to sponge it you have to keep your mind and ears and your uh, open and you have to keep yourself humble and rooted to be able to get that stimuli and if you keep yourself open you will get it because god will himself find a way to give it to you if you believe in god mm. absolutely thank you lovely anuradha now there is um, a question that i also wanted to ask you uh, shrayani ruparelia soni is asking that i would like to ask anuradha ji is why a tabla players mainly men how did anuradha fit into this men's domain did she have any difficulty with fitting in as a woman did i have any difficulty is an understatement <laughs> <laughs> i had a lot of difficulty <laughs> of course see i don't come from a musician family and that was the big disadvantage uh, because most of the people who are musicians come from musician families and uh, they know the ropes of the trade they learn that they are taught that they have an exposure to that plus they are recommended by their own families and that support is very very important for them to grow uh, like they say you know a candle needs a flame any flame needs a needs a protection to prevent it from being snuffed out and uh, uh the protection that uh so i think me not coming from a musician family plus being a girl in a male dominated field was a big 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 problem and i remember when i uh, wanted to learn of course first i was told this is not for you this is ye ladkiyon ka kaam nahi hai ye tumse nahi hoga this was the word and uh, when i was and then of course i learned classical vocal music and tabla and uh, i learned little tabla on my own observing my brother who was already playing and then the teacher sort of heard me after a couple of months and he said oh okay so you can play so now i'll teach you so even the teaching uh, that started didn't start like that it was i was my gender was Uh, a big problem for people to accept <laughs> secondly secondly even when i started performing and i started performing very young when i was 9 years old so that um 
literally shook people up that here who the hell was i and uh, not coming from a musician family and still playing uh how did i manage that how did i you know get there uh and of course people tried everything in the game uh to prevent me from coming up uh and they still try everything they still do everything uh to uh become uh, you know to to prevent me in my path but uh, you know i uh, was told uh, long ago by my parents one thing and my mother told me this uh, she being a well known painter uh, ila pal that's her painting and my father is devinder pal and uh, uh, she said you know khud ko kar buland itna ki banda khud khuda khud bande se puche bata teri raza kya hai so it really means that you have to empower yourself to become that strong and i took on every challenge be it getting in you know um, i was not paid on par with the main musicians i was if i was paid the sound was put down if the sound was okay then some other problem you know something or the other so people tried various things uh, people even tried to poison me a couple of times people tried various things uh but um i'm here that's it <laughs> all i can say is it's it's really the blessing of uh, god my parents my gurus and a lot of people who supported me in that journey i would also like to acknowledge that yes there were people who uh, i'll just narrate an incident like i was playing with ustad sultan khasa great sarangi legend and uh, this was in kota in rajasthan when i was i think 15 years old 15 or 16 and uh, uh he uh, when i was going on the stage there was this quiet in the audience that you know they thought that the main tabla players coming behind and i'm just the helper putting the tabla on the stage and then and i come and i sit on the tabla and there was this like silence that what's happening who's this girl there's no announcement so that was the other thing people would not put my name in the announcement people would not put my name or put not would not even make my announcement at times uh, so these were some of the you know under cutting kind of things that were happening but that's okay i i said that let my work do the talking i don't want to say anything about this uh so anyway coming back to this incident i uh, so sultan khasa Uh, played his alap and then he asked me to play start and so i started so so i started playing and so people got up like that and said oh okay so she actually can play the racket also you know so they're murmuring all this in hindi and i can hear them and acha usko hindi usko tab the racket bhi bajana aata hai and uh, and then i said um, and then he said so then ka sab said uh, so after he finished his part uh, then he looked at me and he used to call me karishma karishma means wonder girl so he used to say cha beta bata do tum kya cheez ho so he looked at me and he said show them you know because he was hearing all these adverse comments so he said show them and then i played my heart out because you know master like him and karishma me was great and the audience got up and it ran towards the stage and i thought they're coming to hit me or something because they were running towards the stage and there was <laughs> it was like what's happening here and so i uh, got up got my hammer in my hand because that's the only weapon i had <laughs> i was sitting in this position i couldn't even get off <laughs> quickly and uh, so but they were just coming to look at me and saying am i for real so they were like coming and touching my hand and saying am i for real or am i some ghost or something or something like that so and then the audience uh once they realized this and then they asked for more and more and made me play more and more con- and the concert went on for 2 3 hours and the next morning there was this line outside my hotel room of people wanting to meet me and saying wo devi ji se milna hai and i'm like who's the devi ji out here and they said aap se milna hai so so it was and you know everywhere i would go uh there was uh, there were people uh, offering me tea and snacks and all that so that love uh you know how that kind of a negative situation got converted was only because of music and uh, so uh like that i have had so many experiences when uh, something uh, you know and but it has always been 
you know, so the great artists like uh, Ustad Shahid Parvez, you know, when they took me to play with them or, uh, you know, and the challenge that they would put in front of me, the artists. And that's another thing I have to thank these artists for. That uh, I remember once I was with uh, Ustad Shahid Parvez in Australia. And I was coming from India and Singapore, and he was coming from uh, America. And he had arrived the previous night, and I was arriving the, the next morning. And the same morning and uh, the evening, we had a concert. Uh, so when I reached there, uh, he was all fresh and waiting for me. And he said, uh, Aap, uh, if you're ready, whenever you're ready, let's practice for a while. I said, OK, sure. So we started in the morning. and. Uh, uh, and he took on every every half an hour, he changed the tal. Sade panch matra, so five and a half beats, six beats, six and a half beats, seven beats, seven and a half beats, eight beats, eight and a half, nine. So like that, he kept on changing the tal. Now, his putting that pressure on me and making me do come up to that challenge, right? I mean, he could have made me just play a simple teen tal. But he put that target that I, and he, he always said, no, no, you will be fine, there is no problem, there is no rehearsal, ki hai aapke you can just play everything. Now that is a, a blessing, I think, of my gurus and the training I received from them, from Abaji and Zakir Bhai, because they have set such towering standards that uh, uh, whatever, you know, I am attempting to do or whatever I, the, that is the big motivator. When I listen to them, when I listen to other masters, there is no place for complacency. There is no place for taking it easy. There is no place for uh, thinking I've achieved anything because it's just the tip of the iceberg that I've started my journey on. And that's what I keep motivating myself with. Wonderful. Kamal Viji. Because I'm speechless. I can't talk now. I know. <laughs> Same with me. Um, I think most of the questions I was going to ask, you have answered this no, time. Speechless, like most of speaking. <laughs> uh, Sne asked this uh, very similar question, uh, but, uh, but I was going to ask about um, your, you play tabla, and not many female artists play tabla. So why you chose tabla? Because of your brother or any other reason? No, actually, when I was, um, uh, I think the whole journey started very young in life. I was uh, interested in, you know, when I, my mother used to sing and mm. my grandmother, uh, and I might just mention also one other thing, that my grandmother was a big patron of the arts and music. And... Uh, lot of great masters uh, like Pandit Jasraji and Hariji and Shivji and uh, Dr. N. Rajam and all these masters used to, were her great friends. Uh, and, uh, and, and she used to, you know, uh, prom you know, support the arts in a very big way. So uh, when I was growing up, I was, my mother was a painter, so she would leave me with my grandmother. And I would listen to all these masters because they were coming to my grandmother's house and singing. So I got into all that right from the time I was literally born. Because even when I was a child, I remember listening to music because my parents used to take me to Vidayat Khasab's concerts and God me rakke pura raat sunte the music. I used to go out to sleep, but I would insist on going to the concert. Uh, even when I was in my in my in my in the arms, so uh, so I think that that germ was already there because of listening to so many masters and music from the time I was born. Then uh, the time came when I wanted to learn vocal music. So actually, I wanted to. I started off with learning classical vocal, and um, and when I would sing the uh, the bandish. Uh, I, as if automatically knew what is the taal or what is the the chand and how that bandish is going. So, you know, it was out of, as if instinctively there, like a rhythmic flair. So a lot of these masters who heard me, they said, you know, you should learn tabla because you seem to be having a flair. 
now uh, it's so and at the same time what happened was that my grandmother she passed away and in the uh, following year when we had her barsi concert uh, pandit uh, shivkumar sharma ji and pandit jasraj ji paid tribute to her accompanied by ustad zakir hussain sir now i met uh, so i was just maybe 6 years old when i met zakir bhai and i heard this most you know and how did i meet him Uh, the, 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 it was in a very interesting way i actually went into his green room and there was this tabla lying there and i felt so attracted that i started playing that he had mm-hmm. must have gone to the bathroom or whatever restroom and uh, i just started playing so he came back and he took me in his lap and he said bajaoge i said ha bajaunge i didn't know who's tabla and who's you know what am i doing? this is mm-hmm. taking his instrument and taking the liberty that's not done but mm-hmm. I, i i was a child and i could get away with it so i took uh, i played uh, you know so he took me in his lap and he and he put my hand at the tabla and i think that's that that divine connection which again got uh, reinforced mm-hmm. and uh, so i played and then of course uh, you know uh, and uh, then i heard, and and then of course that phenomenal tabla that i heard it blew my mind out and that's when i started learning tabla more actively and that's when i said okay now i need to learn this instrument and play and as i said the other artists had already recommended that i play the tabla and uh, then my brother was playing and i was singing and my brother uh, teacher refused to teach me he said that you're a girl you would not be able to play tabla and so i learned on my own and then a couple of months later when he accidentally heard me uh, he said i was good enough to learn so i started learning and then i started performing when i was 9 years old and mm-hmm. uh, then touring and uh, all over uh, by the time i was 11 12 years old and then i started of course learning from abaji when i was little later but i think 11 right. years old i started learning from apaji right. so i got a first a very firm grounding of the banaras karana and then of punjab karana and of course on the way i have myself with my own interest in my own study and my tremendous desire to uh, reach out i uh, have uh, tried to also get in elements of other gharanas because i truly admire all the gharanas for their very distinct qualities and uniqueness that they bring on you know, to a, every experience so that's how my journey mm. began and of course the women not being in this i think is a society issue it's it's you know the mindset problem probably and uh, but nothing to do with this trend but nothing to do I with this trend yeah i had to go through a lot of struggle a lot of opposition a lot of negative th- negative <laughs> people throwing me away not giving me support not not encouraging me so it ultimately came down to how good can my work be and can my work do the talking because there was no godfather for me there was no support for me there was nobody trying to nobody there to recommend me it was only later when i became when i worked myself to be good enough that all these masters started taking me on to playing with them and then i started getting all the support from them uh, so i first had to ramp up to come up to that level and then i got uh, opportunity only with sustained effort and <coughs> a lot of riyas i mean i used to do uh, i used to do uh, what is called a chilla uh, at that point uh, <coughs> Uh, so yeah several hours of practice every day Haji. you have shut shut everybody's mouth you have proved <laughs> absolutely <laughs> i i quite Excellent. agree what uh, sri sharma is saying that anuradha ji uh, on establishing her own space against patriarchy which which is which is true which we have been talking about and rather i have a question um as a vocalist and as we know hindustani classical music we have ragas for different part of the day different season different mood do you have any analogy like that in tabla like something that you can play for this season or a part of a particular part of the day is there anything like that in tabla 
Well, uh, I wouldn't exactly say it's like that, exactly uh, akin to that. But in a certain way, yes. Uh, like, for example, in the morning, I think Peshkar uh, is an alap. Uh, is the alap, you know, the way we approach Peshkar and coming to the technical aspect of uh, music uh, is that the way uh, I think of Peshkar is about, is like an alap. I look at it as uh, as a rag that needs to unfold. Because don't forget my training, my grounding has been in classical vocal music. Uh, so for me, I approach tabla as something that I need to sing out of this instrument. Uh, right? So even when I would play with Kishore Yamankarji, for example, and I would play a dha, and the next dha, right? And she would say, feel the silence between the notes. And she would say, Wo le ke aao. So when I play, I try to bring that musicality into my playing, uh, the alap chari into the tabla. So the tonality or the approach can be uh, uh, rag based. So coming to whether there are different moods, yes, there are. Like when I play uh, a peshkar, uh, it's an alap-based peshkar, or is it a calculation-based peshkar, will be different. For example, in the in the morning, like you have bhairav, and you'll have lalit, uh, rags. Uh, similarly, you I would play a peshkar. So maybe a little later in the in the later later part of the day, or maybe in the little later morning, I might play a uh, kaida, which is in a certain sense a little, you know, a, a, akin to uh, how the prahars through the prahars the rags changes, right, mm. uh, through the day. So like that in the afternoon, maybe I might play something which is. Uh, you know, certain tals which are also, for example, every, like every rag has its prakruti hoti hai, rag ki prakruti hoti yeah. hai. Ke hum bolte hai ke uh, koi veer ras hota hai, koi kiska, you know, um, kya bolte hai, shringar ras hota hai. So like that, tals also have their own prakruti. Achha. Huh. So uh, like that, uh, we can say, say like a teen tal will have and the way you show it, like for example, somebody can play um, say like if I play a teen tal. Now this is giving a very chilled out feel to it. Mm -hmm. But now if I want to if I want to show a little um, activity or a little sprightiness. So then so I might approach the taker like that or so this is adha. Right? So uh, so every tal has a prakruti. For example, uh, if you're playing, uh, say, if you're looking at uh, Japtal, now Japtal can be played, if it's played in a slower speed, it may be very contemplative. Okay? It could literally be like, uh, maybe like a Malkaus or something. So like that, and, and, and the way I will play a solo in the speed. So not that depends on my state of mind. That depends on what I want to communicate. There are times in a solo when I want to, uh, maybe I might play a japtal in a very slow speed. So like, like you play a bada khayal, like you sing a bada khayal. Right, and the approach is different. So, like, we take a big rag, like we took Yaman, 
और अगर हमने नंद ले लिया विच इज मोर सोसाइटी राग सो दप्रोच विल बी डिफरेंट सिमिलरली इफ आई प्ले दादरा फॉर एग्जाम्पल विच इज सेमी क्लासिकल ताल ना इफ आई प्ले दादरा इन नाउ सी द डिफरेंट वेज आई कैन प्ले अ दादरा it's the same thing right it's it's going as the simple dadra is da di da da tu na ka di na so if i'm playing with ghazal i will bring a different flavor of the taal so how does that happen the taal is not just keeping time the taal is giving its own flavor its own um its own character to that composition if i were to play uh, uh so it it that's that's where the prakruti of the taal for example if i'm playing nine beats so din tarike to di na tu na din taal din taal din now if it is going like this so you see there is a certain excitement about it there is a certain tautness about it versus the chaptal so how i treat it how i present it and the content of what i present in it that is what determines the prakruti of the taal or the exposition of the taal in this stage so same way as a rag now only what has happened is in our unfortunately uh there are many people who don't understand or even want to understand uh how deep the taal system is in india they don't uh, want to even give it an opportunity sometimes to even figure that there's so much in it they think only rag or vocal or instrumental is developed yes the rag system is very scientifically developed it is many many centuries old there is a tradition to it but there are people in south india who question this time theory which is there in hindustani music so there is nothing like an absolute i believe that that's where the vocal aspect coming into tabla and the prakruti of the composition or what i want to present in that composition if that is what is comes through in the taal and that's what i endeavor that wherever i approach a taal i look at if i'm accompanying then i have to understand what is that song or the composition about so my theka is matching that and complementing that so if and, i'm playing with say if i'm playing with thumri then the words and the bol bar jo hota hai jo bol banate hain to bolo ko hum gaane mein bhi banate hain shabdon ko table mein bhi banate hain aur unhi bolo ko hum kathak mein bhi bolte hain kathakar bolte hain to un tino cheezon ka mishran kaise hota hai because they are intrinsically connected and it's not uh, it's not uh, happening there uh, is an intrinsic connection but people unfortunately don't know that and they think that tabla is just speed and dar 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 baja diya ho gaya khatam but it's not that there is a lot to it hmm. and which is why i in my own humble way i try to bring in the um should i say the uh the young audiences to to tabla uh and also play like i i also do some innovations i have also done several innovations mm -hmm. like uh, one is of course anuradha pal in tabla jugalpati with herself which is with the two tablas uh, which i started uh, more than i think 10 12 years ago and now everybody is trying to uh, do it so uh, that's one thing secondly also the uh, uh, you know i also present ramayan on the tabla i have oh. also done oh. krishna oh, ki taal Okay. Krishna ke taal, for example, the 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 leelas of Lord Krishna, uh, combined with so I present that, uh, you know, combined with you know with tabla and uh, poetry and all that. So that's another ex. Uh, should I? Which is called Krishna ke taal. Uh, 
Krishna to come. Um, and, uh, and also, uh, I present, uh, like, for example, Ramayana Tabla. Now you'll see how is that happening. So I'll just say a little composition that I created. So this is like a small incident from the Ramayana, as you know, when <laughs> Hanumanji was imprisoned by uh, Ravan in Lanka. And uh, Ravan was the demon king and Hanumanji was uh, the, you know, the messenger of Sri Ram. And she, he goes to Lanka to look for Sita, Sri Ram's wife. I'm just mentioning that for those who may not know this since you have an international audience. And uh, so Ravan is the demon king and he kidnaps Sri Ram's wife and Hanumanji goes to Lanka to look for Sri Ram, uh, look for Sitaji. And that's when uh, Hanumanji is imprisoned by Ravan. And uh, they have a dialogue and uh, and a little tiff and uh, Ravan says that I'm the greater one and Hanumanji says no Sri Ram is uh, and ultimately the Ravan burns the tail sets the Hanumanji's tail on fire and Hanumanji releases himself somehow and jumps around Lanka burning down Lanka and uh, taking the name of Sri Ram so this incident mm, I'll, I'll, I'll just say the composition that I created for this. Here is uh, where Titakin, Titakin. So here Ravan and uh, Hanumanji are, you know, arguing that I'm greater and he says, no, Sri Ram is greater. So Titakin, 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 So he says, I am the greatest one. So then Hanumanji releases himself from that, from the, uh, you know, the, the uh, and jumps at Lanka and burns down Lanka. So so this he releases himself and it's Harumanji. Um, uh, should I say, uh, you know, this is how he how he dialogues with uh, Ram, uh, with Ravan. So uh, like that, I have created several compositions uh, on Ramayan, on Krishna Kirtan, uh, on Ardhanarishwar Shiva, on. Um, on the Nataraj, on the the dance of destruction by Mahisha, you know, the Mahisha Sur, the dance of destruction and Kali Mata. So, uh, I, I these these were primarily I, I composed them because I felt I needed to have a larger, you know, connect. Plus, uh, I believe that. Uh, plus, I've also you know played like compositions. Tals like six and a half beats, for example, in uh, in the Womad and the Woodstock Festival. Now, who can imagine in a huge rock festival like Woodstock that somebody would want to play a six and a half beat rhythm cycle? But I did that because I wanted the foreign audiences to listen to the beauty and the depth of our Indian classical music. And I did it on a stage when you would literally expect a very fast kind of a pulsating music. And here I played a six and a half beat in a pulsating style. So people were, were like tapping to it, but it was six and a half beats. So it all depends on how you present your music and how you connect with the audiences. So this is how Tals have different prakriti, but a lot of this depends on the performer, as is the case also with vocal and uh, instrumental music. Thank you, Anuradha. Um, before, Kamal Piji, do you want to ask anything? Because we are almost, I, I did promise to Anuradha that we will finish in, within one and a half hours. But Bato Bato Me Pata Nei Chata. Hear you. <laughs> Can you hear me now? Um, it's very soft. Oh, OK. Can, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Can you hear Kamal Piji? Hello, can you hear me? 
No, I think some problem with the so on her computer. Yeah. We can hear you. Mm. We can hear you. So why don't you play a little solo? Hopefully by that we'll all recover yes. our sound. Before, before we um, conclude the mm. session today, I think it would be great if we could hear mm. something from Anuradha, her magical tabla. And before she starts, just a little announcement for all my viewers that next week, Sunday, at 3 p.m. UK time, we will have a session celebrating the centenary of the Kathak maestro Sitara Deviji. I will be joined by Sitara Deviji's daughter Jayanti Mala and granddaughter Rishika. Please stay tuned and do join. That's going to be another wonderful session. And um, over to Anuradha. Before we conclude, Anuradha, please, if you could present something for our audience, that's going to be great. I'm not sure if she can hear me. Yeah, about it. We can at least we can hear her. So as far as she get a message, we can try. My God, I'll try it here. Four and a half hours, which is seven thirty, okay. not eight thirty. I can't hear you actually. Okay, we are going to end the session. If you want to play something, okay. does that make are sense? We in English, we hmm? can hear you. So you play we can me. hear you. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, I couldn't quite hear you, but I think you said play. So I'll, yes. I will uh, play with. Uh, I will end uh, my performance uh, with um, a composition in, uh, this is a, a sort of a thumri uh, in Ra Khamaj, Lovely. Uh, Vanda And uh, this is my tribute uh, to uh, Pandita Girja Deviji, uh, with whom I played a lot. Uh, and I was very, and she yesterday was her birthday along with mine. And uh, we shared uh, a tremendous bond, and uh, she uh, was like a grandmother for me. And uh, and also, <clears throat> so and and this uh, and I'm playing this, and I'm going to play some luggies. Uh, Lagi is the special sort of tabla compositions that are played with semi-classical music, and uh, also playing tribute to uh, Pandit uh, Anant Gopal Madhupadhyayji who passed away yesterday, the great tabla player from Kolkata. And uh, of course, Pandit Rajan Mishraji, who passed away last week. Pandit uh, Debu Chaudhary ji, Pandit, uh, you know, Pratik Chaudhary, a friend, great friend. Uh, and so many other masters who passed away this. Um, and Ustad Iqbal Ahmad Khasa, who passed away earlier in the last year. And of course, Pandit Jasraji, who also was my mama and uh, uh, so this is my tribute to all those masters and to all those who have helped me supported me and inspired me in my journey
बात वाह 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 आपको आवाज आ रही है हमारी यू कांट हियर देयर इज अ प्रॉब्लम देयर इज अ प्रॉब्लम ऑफ द साउंड हैज अनुराधा इज अनएबल टू हियर अस प्रॉपर्ली 
but um, I'm sure she can probably go to the Facebook page and listen to what I'm saying. But just to say thank you so much, Anuradha, for joining us thank here. You. And so to our viewers, whoever is watching now, whoever will be watching this letter, please do come and support this great cause that people are suffering really badly in india and we all need to be there we all need to support them and uh, please do come forward and this if you need a, to send something you can either center that i'm trying to set up with some friends and uh, the information is given in chandraji's page and i hope that all of you will contribute uh, like you have supported us for the musicians which i did the campaign earlier I hope one of you will also support this. Um, and uh, another thing, uh, Janaji, I forgot to mention is that uh, it was recently uh, Ustad Lara Sahib's uh, birthday on the 29th of April. And uh, I did a special tribute in his centenary year with uh, taking 217 tabla players on one wow. stage. And this was the biggest tribute ever to any artist uh, by so many musicians uh, of the same instrument. And the way I did this event was that the first uh, 175 children played, followed by a film that I produced on Abaji, on his life, on his contribution, and the multifaceted genius that he was, and uh, presented after that, uh, an hour and a half tabla solo, uh, where I presented his very unique approach and compositions and the style, uh, you know, from the old masters, 200, 300 year old compositions uh, that I've been, I have learned. Uh, and uh, ended with uh, all these children and their uh, teachers and everybody else joining me on stage. So uh, 217 tabla players, Pay tribute, and this was a world record uh, ever, uh, which I right. did in honor of my guru, Ustad Hasab, in his centenary year. Lovely. Thank you for sharing with us all these stories and your journey. Um, and it's so inspiring. Whoever is listening to this out there, please do um, listen to it and share because you can see that you know there are struggle. But as Anuradha said, you have to motivate yourself. There is no one who would come and motivate you. You have to do it yourself. You need to understand that, you know, you need to do it. So that's the journey, what we have heard, not only today, but all these sessions that we have been organizing. So thank you for joining again. And we'll see you next week. Till then, please look after yourself. Look after others. Be there. Support each other. I'm sure. Let's end with a positive note. We will come out of this. We have music and we will pray through our music and we will most definitely come out of this difficult time. Please stay well. Stay tuned. Thank you, everyone. Thank you from me too. Namaskar. Thank you. Namaskar. And Thank you very much. See you next and Sunday. Namaskar to everyone. Thank you. Thank you.